Hey everyone, this is Samantha and I am currently 11 months post-op. I am almost a year post-op. That's kind of amazing to actually say. That's a really, really big deal. A lot has kind of changed in my life over the past year and there's been a lot going on, especially when it comes to Trans Youth Channel, which has just officially become an official non-profit organization, so kind of mind-blowing. I'm also in the middle of recovery, well, more toward the end or so, and I also have a lot going on at work and in my personal life. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two videos. This video is going to be more for personal uses, how I'm doing, how I'm feeling, where things are going with me. And then I also really, 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 really want to talk about top surgery because I am actually planning on getting breast augmentation, top surgery, in about February of next year huge, huge, huge deal. So if you guys do have any doctors, anything like that, please by all means recommend them down in the comments. And who knows, I might be doing this same set of videos, basically reviewing Dr. Suporn with that surgeon as well, which would be pretty cool. The second video, which I'll actually link right here, is going to be a little bit about preconceived notions and questions and comments that people actually have about Dr. Suporn and my commentary on such things. Um, I've noticed that there are a lot of questions that are being asked and a lot of questions that are being not asked by a lot of the people who are going to Dr. Suporn. So I wanted to create a video that's very specific to that fashion, which will be seen right here. Let's go ahead and get started. The number one thing you guys probably want to hear is about the down there's as far as recovery goes. Um, as usual, we'll start with dilation. I am 11 months post-op right now, and I have already made the decision to move to dilating once every other day. One of the big things that kind of drove that was my feelings about stress in other parts of life, which we'll get to a little bit later. But I found that it's not really impacting me negatively in any way, shape, or form. Um, I'm not experiencing any lack of depth. I'm not experiencing any problem with width. And it doesn't hurt to dilate um, at the two-day area. Now, I am also not doing exactly what the good doctor says. Dr. Suporn actually says you should be doing it once per day until your one year, and then every month from there on dropping off a session or two until you get to the point where you're only doing it like twice or three times a week. Um, I found that that's not really necessary. Um, my sweet spot, so to speak, is between 24 to 48 hours. Um, so I can go 36 hours without dilating and I can go 48 hours with very, very, very minor problems as far as dilating goes. In regards to looks, it still looks just like a vagina. It hasn't really changed. I don't anticipate that it will in any way, shape, or form. And the next one is actually the super awkward one because my partner's mother watched these videos. Sexual intercourse is not my top priority. It never has been. I've never really had a huge sex drive. And although I do have one, I can go like a month or two weeks or three weeks before I really need to have sexual intercourse again. And it is very, very healthy. And one of the things that is actually rather amusing, but very, very true, is when you go to Dr. Suporn, he will tell you that between eight months to one year, you should be having a fairly active sex life, whether that be with one partner or with many partners. Uh, it's kind of a big thing, and it's something that I really wish I had done, to be completely honest. In the words of Betty White, vaginas tend to take a pounding, and unfortunately, because I haven't had sex very often, I can't take a pounding very much. So as a result, I think that if I were to have been more sexually active, it may have changed that situation. If you are sexually active or if you're not sexually active, this is probably something that you'll want to think about before you do go to Dr. Suporn. Although I know it's probably the same thing with most SRS surgeons. How is this going to affect your sex life, your sex drive, etc.? I personally don't really care. I don't really mind. I, it would be nice if I did have more of a sex drive because honestly I think I would be mentally more capable of doing things if I was, you know, sexually active, but I don't particularly mind, and it doesn't seem like my partner does either, so 
We'll see what happens. Typical life is working perfectly fine. I would consider myself 100% recovered. And the main reason I say that is because I can now bike about 10 miles and then back without feeling anything. Um, I'm able to bike to and from work and it doesn't really have an effect on my typical life. But yeah, that's my vagina. I do kind of want to move on to another fairly serious topic, and for those of you who have been watching my channel for a while and who have caught on the small nuances, my videos tend to carry a lot of emotion that I don't necessarily talk about or bring to the surface. I am not a huge fan of opening this portion of my life to the internet, but I feel like I need to at this point in time because it has quite an effect on my transition, and I think it has quite an effect on other people who transition as well. And that topic is, unfortunately, eating disorders. Now, I actually have binge eating disorder. Um, I don't have anorexia, I don't have bulimia, but I do have binge eating disorder. And at the heart of a lot of these eating disorders is something called dysmorphia. You'll notice the commonality between dysmorphia and dysphoria. Dysmorphia is the feeling that your body should be something that is improved or better. You should be thinner, you shouldn't have a stomach, you shouldn't be obese, you should have wider hips, you should have bigger breasts, etc. It's dysmorphia. You see your body in a way that it's not. Whereas you have dysphoria, which is this idea that your body is just plain wrong. There's something missing or there's something that needs to change or that's different. And kind of getting hit by both of them is a double whammy. And unfortunately for the trans community, and there are statistics to back this, eating disorders are a fairly large problem considering how similar they are to dysphoria. So the reason why I talk about this is because I'm thinking about creating a video series about my specific eating disorder in relation to transition. It's a really, really big topic for me. It's not something that I want to bring to the internet, but it's something I feel that I should. So let me know if you think this would be interesting. If you do want to hear from me, just comments down below. My Facebook link is there as well. You can always feel free to friend me at any point in time. Speaking of that link down there in the comments, I'd also like you to provide as many resources as possible for top surgery. I am in the stage of uh, research. I plan on actually having my surgery around February or March of next year, 2015, and I'm in this stage where I need to start looking at surgeons. So if you have any comments, concerns in regards to surgeons, if you have any recommendations, toss them in the comments below or friend me on Facebook so that we can talk about it. You can PM me. Uh, we can have that private conversation. I just want to open up this conversation to the rest of the community, but otherwise that's basically it. For future videos, I do still want to make sure that I do have everyone's questions answered as far as Dr. Sue Porn goes. So if you do have any questions, just go into the comments down below. Once again, third time. I also have my Facebook linked down below. You can PM me. We can have that conversation. And otherwise, thank you guys very much for watching. Bye now.